Hello everyone, Kimeta here, welcoming you back to Let's Play Kirby's Dream Land 2. Today we are going into Ripplefield, where we will be meeting our uh, last terrible companion. And I will have to admit something, I am using a different file for this game, because I lost one I was using previously. But the show must go on, uh, losing a file is a, no excuse. So, as you can probably imagine, Ripple Field is majorly, majorly a water level. We're also introduced to the some new power-ups. This is Stone. Press B button, you become invincible, and uh, if you, well, you become invincible but stationary. However, as you see there, if you land on a slope, you'll roll. And now we have the these underwater sections, which uh, you can inhale underneath them, obviously. Instead, you'll just blow really dangerous bubbles. Rip that to defend yourself. And grab the pepper drink and let's move forward. You also kind of move awkwardly. I'll try to swim. A little awkwardly. It's kind of like flying, in a sense. Anyway, we are now down with Area 1 of this world. Uh, uh. And now into Area 2. Where we just drop like a rock. I wasn't kidding about the invincibility. Nothing can touch you while you are stone. It doesn't last forever, though. It will kind of eventually wear off. And now we have the mid boss, which is this uh, electro jellyfish. Yeah, don't get hit by those, or you'll end up zorched. Which is. It's a really long recovery time, more than anything. And I kind of temporarily forgot about the shockwave there. Which does the same thing as the lightning bolts, as you saw. And I missed. And we defeat it. And we get introduced to a new uh, power as well Spark. And here's our uh, final animal companion of the game Kine. Kine, as you can clearly tell, is a fish. Which means he has unparalleled mobility in water. In fact, he, he can move fast enough to overcome these currents. Which we're gonna be needing to uh, well, get to some secrets. Unfortunately, as you also probably saw there, uh, Kind's ground mobility in this game is terrible. His, uh, he moves really slow and he really jump. Also, this is a big kind and spark uh, combination. He generates a light bulb. And as you can see, the light bulb can be used to light up dark areas. When you launch the light bulb and it hits something, it also creates a, an explosion. When you launch the light bulb. Yeah, kind of just like a coup is the only way you can uh, inhale underwater. Kind plus Neil gets you this, and <laughs> yeah, poor Kind puts up a lot of abuse with the with powers he goes through there. And Max and Tomato. Now we can go into Area Three, which is really un underwater, but despite being underwater, it, there's not all that much water there. I mean, we're swimming in this first section, but... Okay, 
Okay, I guess there is a lot of water in this particular area. Time plus fire. It shoots a fire away forward. It's got more range than the uh, uh, Rick plus fire, but it's not. It's just a little bit slower. We'll be going down there later. First, we need to get another particular power up. Time plus stone. Turns poor kind into a fish weight. So the reason why I'm going down here and I need to get stone is that the rainbow drop is in this area. You need kind to swim up against those currents. We get this little bonus room, which is dark and has a star. If you were to use kind of a spark, the light bulb, you would be able to see a hidden door here. But it's right above where I'm standing there. And here is the rainbow drop room. You need stone to break these rocks. And now to get out of here has kind. Swim, kind, swim. I don't want to keep stone for uh, well, the boss of this area. I'm gonna grab fire here. We're gonna be getting kind of plus fire for uh, the rainbow shot in the next area. Just to let you know. I may or may not be able to get it on my first go through. Anyway, now we have this section here, which is kind of tailor made for stone. And yeah, here's a. Uh, uh, oh well. I don't want that anyway. Have a drink. Need that. Almost out of here. In fact, we are out of here. And all I get is a pepper drink. Alas. Now we can take on the boss of this area. Which is some sort of giant angler fish. If you do not bring Kine into this battle with you, it's not going to be a very fun time. Because the bubbles will do next to nothing against this thing. The only way you can do some any real damage is via redirecting those starfish into back at the thing. But with Kai, we can just kind of inhale everything as they come and spit back out for a pretty easy win. No power is required. And now we have access to a new world. Iceberg! Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be swimming in this fresh water. Yeah, sure. See ya, kind. Yeah, literally. See ya, kind. Now, these enemies here, those little, uh... Yeah, these enemies here, these are really weird. If you go near them as Kirby alone, they're all happy and smiley and just so great to meet you. Come near with an animal companion and they become rather demonic, actually. If they encounter you while you're 
with an animal companion, they, uh, they will forcibly dismiss your animal companion. And destroy them and your animal companion in the process. Anyway, since we have a lot of ice in this area, uh, well, Rick's gonna be pretty useful. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, they're pretty much now. Those things are pretty much invincible to everything you can throw at them, except this, our last power. Uh, freeze. You can freeze them solid, and that's pretty much the only way you can defend yourself against them on an animal companion. As you see there, uh, freeze, well, freeze enemies. And... This is freeze plus brick, which kind of gives you some sort of polar shield. By itself, uh, Freeze just launches these little, uh, puffs of, uh, little puffs of ice. And that's the massive damage of the, uh, double nail. This big boss was called Blocky, by the way. And then we have Rick plus Stone, which, well, it turns Rick into a boulder. It kind of works like Basic Stone, except you can actually kind of control where you're going. To an extent, when you're on a slope. And we are out of here. Yeah. Extra life. As you probably noticed, uh, Iceberg here is where we start getting more than three areas per world. This place has four. And now we have, uh, sort of a polar blizzard. Ooh, the wind will pretty much doesn't give you any drawer. Doesn't give you any sail, where, where you want to go backwards or not. In fact, we kind of need to go into here first and deal with, uh, the umbrella. we can get, uh, trade Rick in for Koo. Yeah, this is the point of the game where you're gonna be start switching between animal companions a bit more. Uh, Koo has just enough variable mobility to let you go past the wind and to get here to where you actually need to go. These icicles here are actually kind of annoying because they don't dissipate immediately upon, uh, contact with the ground. They will bounce first before you can... Before they decide to uh, go away. Yeah, uh, Koo plus Parasol is actually kind of a nice combination to use here, he says. Ow. That's me just being a little too late on activating Parasol. Parasol is also pretty useful here. But not for long, because now we need to trade it in for a fire. Yeah, Koopa Spire is sort of a, a meteor dive downward. Boom! Ah! Run away! Run away! Yeah, that was the wrong way to go. I should have went to the left for this uh, extra life. I personally kind of find the Koo plus Fire to be a little awkward to use, but it's nothing too bad. And now to area 3. Koo plus, uh... Yeah, Koo plus Freeze is the same thing as Ordinary Freeze, only it's kind of multi-directional downwards. Kind of 
kind of awkward to use because you're, it only really aims downwards, and uh, you're constantly falling downward while you're not in motion. Kind plus spark here is a thunderbolt. It just sort of rains lightning down on your enemy. Which I will demonstrate on poor Mr. Frosty right here. Doesn't even have a chance. And kind. Because now we have an underwater section. And, and which uh, kind of spark is pretty good. Because you're only really moving in one direction, so you can just kind of strike everything. Can't go up there, though, with um, Kyan's Bark, I believe. I don't want to be here anymore. Ah! Now I have to outrun this thing as Kyan. I'm not going to be needing Kind Plus Spark for the next section, but I do kind of need uh, fire, but I'll be able to get fire in the next area anyway. And area 4, in which we have uh, to deal with uh, this thing. And it's just kind of doing its own thing, actually. And defeated. Fluff. And there's Q, but I don't really need Q. And now for the fun part, getting through this section as kind. It's auto scroll. Sources of fire here. All right. I sh Hopefully, if I don't lose Kine, uh, I should be able to actually get this rainbow shard. Rainbow shard that's actually in this area. I have to actually play carefully. So it actually is a little, a little obnoxious to get. Yeah. See this? We need to get down there. Do that. We need to melt this ice blocks with fire. And now here's the really hard part. Uh, never mind. You need to uh, give up fire temporarily to uh, inhale those blocks. With Ka it's only possible with Kine because you need to be able to uh, reclaim your firepower after uh, words. But since I lost Kine, I'll have to get it another time. For now, we shall take on the boss of this area, which is some sort of polar reptile. Obviously, you don't want to be in the way of that uh, polar graph. Because that happens. So 
surprisingly enough, I don't think it actually has as much uh, recovery as even being electrocuted. into the brief from those ice skills, which hurt, which still hurt you, by the way. I'm not impressed. I do kind of like how the ice physics here are incorporated into the little victory dance. And away I go! Alright, so we've unlocked a new world. Well, I'll go get the rainbow drop from Iceberg, and I will see you another time. Take care now.